Okay, everybody, welcome back to the show. Great to have you here today on our first Cabral House Call. This is episode 2990 of the show. So if you want to follow along with all the amazing community questions, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2990. And of course, if you or a loved one still haven't picked up their copy of The Rain Barrel Effect, please do so. It's completely free now. It's my gift to you. You just pay shipping and handling. I pay to print the book. And of course, course, it's always available on Amazon. If you always uh, feel more comfortable going to Amazon for some of those purchases, no problem on our end. All right, let's dive right into the show here today. We are here to listen to some of the community's questions and of course, be able to give some answers to those that you either care about or maybe they are for yourself. What I always like to say about these weekend shows is that it's not always about getting the answers or the knowledge for you. Oftentimes, it's the ability to be able to help others when these questions come up. So kind of keep that in mind, whether you're listening to, I'm looking at the first question, I'm just opening up the document now, um, something about Prop 65. Okay, we'll talk about that. What does that mean? What are those chemicals in the state of California that are banned? And so we'll go through all of these different things. And of course, if you have your question, feel free to write in any day of the week, get same day answers at cabralsupportgroup.com. Or if you want to wait to have your question read live in the show, you can ask at stephencabral.com slash ask Cabral. Questions are answered typically about eight to 12 weeks once they come in. That's simply because of the queue of questions we have before you. All right, let's get to that first question. This one's from Hannah. Hannah's asking, hi, it's me again. I have one more question. I'm a competitive equestrian, so I make sure my protective gear is as good as you can get. I noticed, however, on my helmet, it has a Prop 65 warning containing BPA. Could I be absorbing this? Thanks again. You are awesome. Thank you, Hannah. Appreciate you. So in the state of California, if a, basically if it is manufactured or um, I believe at least shipped to the state of California, you need a Prop 65 warning on anything that the state of California has deemed to be uh, a chemical above certain levels. So for example apples and spinach and many other things, if you were to package them, would need a Prop 65 label. And the reason is that they contain small amounts of lead. Now, lead is in the soil, it's in nature, and these things exist. We don't typically worry about that, but many years ago, the state of California put a a, a wild uh, Prop 65 law out there that the state of California doesn't actually um, institute. They allow attorneys in California to run around regulating all that. It's a pretty wild situation. Now, I think it started out as a really great thing, meaning that we don't want especially pregnant women exposed to lead or, or any of these things. And I get it and I totally understand that. But now you go into California, you see like in every hotel you're in, like every store everywhere, it's just this Prop 65, Prop 65. It's it's got it's gotten a little uh gotten a little out of control. Having said that, BPA is a plastic that we don't necessarily want you absorbing. So when it's on the helmet, that, but this goes, it would be in every state, but California is the only one who mandates this. It's plastic. Okay. If you have a plastic component touching your skin, Yes, you could uh, absorb it, especially if that helmet sits under the sun, heats up, and touches your skin. But I believe most riding helmets, equestrian being horseback riding, I believe, um, you have a leather strap or something like that touching your head, some type of fabric, so you're not necessarily absorbing the plastic from that helmet. All right, so hopefully that's helpful. But no, you don't want ideally plastic touching your skin, especially in the heat. All right, Anonymous is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I was wondering, when you say we should eat three meals a day, does that include snacks? And is it fine to just do three meals with no snacks if that works for your lifestyle? I'm always told that I should be eating more than three meals, but I feel better off with three meals rather than four smaller ones as it causes me to binge for no other reason. Is that fine? Yeah, I have a whole podcast um, on why three meals per day. So it doesn't mean every human, but most humans do best eating about three meals per day. So 12 hours to 16 hours of daily intermittent fast from about six at night to eight in the morning. That's about 14 hours. That works for most people. Again, I can't give you specifics for you because I haven't seen your labs. I don't know your cortisol numbers. I don't know your thyroid numbers. I don't know any, I don't have any of that information, right? So all I can give you is generalities. But then by eating, let's say eight o'clock, nine o'clock or so in the morning, then you can go four hours 
and then you can eat around noon or 1 p.m. And then you can go another four hours and eat around five. And again, I have a whole podcast on this. It's called Why Three Meals Per Day at stephencabral.com slash podcast. But essentially what it does is your blood sugar goes up a little bit. That's not abnormal. That's normal. It lowers typically stress hormones. Then the blood sugar level comes down, hopefully within about two hours to three hours maximum after a meal. Then you're going to start to build up an appetite again, and then you move into your next meal. So that's why three hours works for most people. Now, let's say you're a child or you're younger or you're burning through your glucose reserves faster or you're, you don't have a lot of body fat. Any of these things, well, they might do well with one snack per day. So they might do well with more or let's just call it almost like four meals. They might do fine with a um, 8 a.m., let's call it 11.30 a.m. or noon, and then a 2.33, and then a 5.30 at night. So that work might work better for some people, okay? So I'm just, I can't give you exact, but for most people, three meals per day seems to work really well for blood sugar levels, satiation, protein, fiber, all right? But good, good question, and no, you don't need to do snacks, especially as you get to be an adult, uh, and that you're not like super active in sports, et cetera, all right? So Lara's up next. Hi, I looked into parchment and baking paper. We use a non-bleached organic one that says it's from forest trees, but it has a coating of silicone made from sand. You once answered my question about using silicone molds for baking and that it isn't a problem. So I'm guessing it's the same for baking paper as well. Just checking. Hee hee. Thank you for all you do. Love your work and your podcast. You're amazing. Thank you, Lara. Appreciate that. You're amazing. Um, so yes, I feel the same way about the parchment paper. So let's, let's think about our options. It's also trying to choose like the best option. So using, uh, aluminum foil, not a good option because the aluminum Micro amounts, yes, micro particles over time can absolutely seep in your food, especially when exposed to heat. And then some of the aluminum, sometimes you're scraping it, a little bit gets into that food. So that's not ideal. So then what do we, what can we do on top of a pan for baking? Well, we could do nothing, right? And then it would stick to the pan. And then that makes it difficult for cleaning and all that. So you could do that, but then you also have to make sure your pan is not aluminum. Because if it's aluminum, well, better to put parchment paper over it. Or if it's stainless steel, okay, then that that's typically okay then. So what we do in our house is we use a, just like you, non-bleached organic parchment paper. We put that on top. We don't spray it. We don't use oils. We don't coat it. We cook the veggies, cook the food, and then we add our olive oil. We add our um, sea salt, all of that afterwards. So and you, you can still use spices like rosemary, etc. cetera, but um, we typically add but we will bake the spices, but we won't necessarily add it until um, the, the oils until after. All right. So hopefully that was helpful. And, and yes, we have, we have no issues with uh, good quality brands, just like you're talking about. All right. Dan's up next. Hello, Dr. C. How do I fix my HPA axis dysfunction, which often leads to severe episodes of fatigue after intense physical or mental stressors? Thanks, Dan. Okay. Big question. Obviously, um, difficult to give you the entire plan within two to three minutes of answering your question. But you know, I'm someone that suffered from HPA axis dysfunction. So I get it. I understand. I had had Addison's disease, right? And so um, HPA for not, that's not common knowledge, right? It stands for hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And so essentially when we get stressed, we, the brain sends signals. I won't go through all of that right now. We teach all of this in, inside of IHP, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute. Uh, but your body then gets signals for the adrenals to produce a stress neurotransmitter, uh, often referred to as a hormone, norepinephrine. That kind of gets the adrenaline going, the, the blood pressure, the accelerated heart rate, all of those different things, maybe sweating. And then uh, what happens after that is cortisol is produced. And cortisol is a glucocorticoid, which can act at least in the short term as a anti-inflammatory. It can give us energy. It can break down stored glycogen, glucose, bring it into the bloodstream. So we're ready for fight or flight. So what do we do? Well, um, I want you, Dan, if you haven't already read the rain barrel effect to read the rain barrel effect, because it is everything, right? So it's diet. You might say, well, how does it have to do with diet? If your blood sugar is erratic, it spikes your uh, stress hormone levels, meaning like if you drop into hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, you get a cortisol spike. That's how the body works. So diet, exercise, stress reduction, right? Stress reduction techniques, um, toxin removal. So we lower the inflammatory based uh, molecules in the body. We work on emotional based balance, our rest, our sleep at night, 
scientifically backed supplements, which work the fastest in the beginning, and then success mindset. So it's really all of those things and then knowing your triggers, becoming more self-aware. And in the short term, I don't like to go all supplements, but in the short term, uh, this is what we use in our practice, which is full spectrum magnesium, omega-3s, and adrenal sooth. Now that's in addition to the daily nutritional support, of course. You need all your B vitamins in there. So daily nutritional support at a minimum, omega-3s, full spectrum magnesium, adrenal sooth. And that's that will give you immediate uh, effects on the adrenals, meaning like calming the stress response. But I also like to work on what are the initial triggers? What's causing the stress, right? I want to work on all that as well. Okay. All right. Good question, Dan. And then I have lots of podcasts on this at stephencabral.com slash podcast. All right. Audrey is going to be our last question for the day. And they are writing in with, hi, Dr. Brawl. First, I want to thank you for freely sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. It has truly changed the course of my life. And I'm happy to hear that, Audrey. Thank you for letting me know. In your fat lossity course, you said it is best to eat between the hours of 10 to 2. I get up at 4.30 a.m. for F45. How long is too long for me to wait to eat after waking without putting my body in a stressful state, especially after a hard workout. Thanks so much. Yeah, so that's why this is this is all bio-individualized. Inside of the Fatlocity course, it is true that strongest digestion is typically between the hours of 10 to 12, 10 to 2. You're right. But that doesn't mean, and the average person might wake up around 7 a.m. Okay, like this is just like generalities, right? Because there's 8 billion people on the planet. I, it's so hard to give um, generalities, but I have to give at least, because if not, I would never be able to, to speak on a podcast, right? I have to be able to give some generalities. So if you're, work, if you're waking up at 4.30 a.m., let's, let's think about that. Are you not going to fuel your body for five and a half hours? And so I want to understand you, your body. I would love you to run a stress moon and metabolism test. And then we'll know, well, what are your thyroid levels? Are you stressing yourself out by intermittent fasting that long? And so what I would say is, um, if you do well on a fasted workout, no problem. But then you're probably eating an hour after your workout. I mean, I would say like we need to then get your body some nourishment. Uh, most likely that's what we're going to do. And so let's say your F45 is at 5.30 a.m. You're getting up an hour before. I'm just making this up. Um, I have friends that own F45s and I have friends that, of course, do F45 workouts. So let's just say it's 5.30 a.m. Okay, so then you finish. It's 45 minutes later, F45, right? So let's just say you're home around 5.30. You shower, get ready. Uh, sorry, 6.30. You might be eating by 7, 8 a.m. And that would be totally fine. Totally fine. And then your next meal would then be around 1231. And then your dinner would be around five or 530 or so. Like if you're kind of following that fat lossity system. If people don't know what fat lossity is, uh, we're actually, it's the course isn't going to change, but we're revamping the actual form. We're not changing the ingredients, but we're revamping it. And you're going to see it debut in just another few weeks as Metavolve. I'll talk about that more on the show. I'm not going to talk about it here today. Same great formula, same course. Uh, different packaging, and uh, and we'll talk about why we did that. But again, same great formula, nothing's changing there. So that is that. That's our last question for the day. Hopefully that was helpful. Appreciate all of you tuning in, and I'll be back tomorrow answering another five to six questions from our community. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.